Hello everyone and welcome back to Cities by Steven. You're talking to Steven. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe button. Get that bell notification on too. So you don't miss on the next episode of Fort Prairie on Alberta themed city. Welcome back to the city. Last time we were here, we started expanding Greenberg and we also hit the big city milestone. Great achievements. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be building uh, an interchange that's going to be a bit of a hybrid between a system and a service interchange. And we'll talk about it momentarily. Uh, but the reason why we're doing this video today is because, well, I am sick and I can barely hold a conversation without coughing for more than a few minutes. So I'm going to cross my fingers that I can get through the introduction and then we're going to be diving into a bit uh, of a, a speed through uh, build. Now, uh, last time we did one of these, I asked for your suggestions on if you like these uh, styles of builds. And, uh, you know, thank you very much for all those pointers last time. I'm going to ask for those same pointers again. This time we're going to stick with the exact same style of video, mainly because uh, I just can't hold a conversation for more than a few minutes without coughing. So uh, next time we do something like this, we'll change up the, the style. And hey, this is the interchange that we built last time we did one of these speed builds. However, there is a couple things in the city that I want to point out to you that I've done off camera. And uh, off camera, you say, Steven, you never build stuff off camera. Well, I have because uh, it's actually been quite a long time in on my end since I've actually built in the city. And I knew there was a couple things that were pending that needed to get done. Uh, and while I was off sick, I was able to kind of do them. And one of those things was making sure that the high density was at the, the level that we're looking for, because we we're trying to build a medium density area, but I forgot to make everything historical. So everything grew up a little bit higher than I was, uh, you know, looking for. So uh, I went through and I deleted all the high rises. We, um, and then I, uh, you know, made them all specific buildings I was looking for. And there's a couple other spots that I want to just touch on from comments that I've been able to implement. Uh, so let's hop out. And this is the screenshot that we left off at. So let's take a quick look at some of the high rises. So yeah, a lot of them are really, really high. And I didn't really like that. So I was going for more of um, this kind of vibe here. And you know what? I just realized I have the daylight. Oh, no, I don't have the use daylight on. Or, uh, you know, uh, day night cycle. That's the term. Um, so we have a couple uh, unique high rise buildings in here or medium density buildings. You know, just a couple stories. This one's four stories. That's kind of the more, that's kind of more of the vibe I was going for with this. More in line with this kind of art deco theme we have through here. Bit of a transitioning area. Um, some high density buildings up in here. You know, by the park. I've added in fences behind them as well. Improved the trees. Got a couple high density buildings over in here. I've really gone through and picked out the buildings that I was looking for as well. Uh, that really goes with like the theme of this. And then we also have some high rise buildings over in here. I particularly like these ones. They flow pretty nicely together. Kind of goes with the theme. Uh, so that's one thing I did off camera. Uh, the other thing I did off camera uh, kind of comes from a suggestion about a story of why this is the way it is. And it comes from our improving connectivity video. We're just right out over in here. So there's a bit of a bend in Linden Street as it goes into uh, Brownsville Crossing. And uh, JMWZ pointed out that perhaps what happened is there were some stores over here that when they were trying to align the road systems between the old uh, farming town and the new town, uh, when they were trying to, you know, make the train station, and everything like that, maybe some of these store owners, as we see some store owners down here, uh, didn't want to sell. So this area has kind of been in a bit of disrepair. There's a bit of a warehouse over here, an old gas station, you know, some older buildings. Um, and yeah, I thought that was a really cool story. So instead of, you know, making this road straight and then just continuing straight, which would link up with this road, they had to bend around and kind of left some, some fallow land here. But I've also added in uh, some train yard assets as well. So that's... That was another thing. And then if we continue down Linden Street, which we go right into Brownsville Crossing, there was another suggestion, which was just to add a road between uh, this one here and into Brownsville Crossing. So what I did was I made this one, this road here. Now the buses come through here uh, as well, which is really good because more traffic avoids the crossing of Brownsville Crossing. 
And I've also made this little cenotaph area as well. So that is about as long as I can hold my breath or hold my, my you know, speaking without coughing because I can feel it coming on. So uh, this is where we're going to be building out today. Uh, this highway is going to turn into a major street in the downtown. Uh, this road here, which is Mackenzie Street, is going to become a major avenue in this area as well. And that's why it's going to become a bit of a service slash system interchange because uh, this road is going to be upgraded immensely as this road goes right into Prairie Station. This and past a couple of industry areas as well. This road is going to become a major avenue in the city. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at getting this through here and we're going to get a bit of a, a, a custom interchange here, which I'm going to call it like a bit of a hairpin interchange. I don't really know the term. It's kind of like a clover leaf, but I'm trying to kind of blend some styles together. I was looking at some maps out in the prairies. You know, a lot of the interchanges there are clover leaf interchanges. So this is kind of like that. And then we'll also look at how we're going to connect up the rail line uh, and bring it into the downtown as well. Just the beginning of it, because I don't want to touch on that too, too much. But uh, that's where we're going to leave off. I will talk to you all shortly as we'll start building this up. Um, and, you know, we'll do a bit of a recap and talk about the interchange. And, uh, you know, this is going to give us plenty of opportunities in the future as we start looking at some of the downtown roads um, that, uh, you know, this week we'll start looking at uh, a bit more in depth. So let's uh, let's call it here. And I'm going to have a bit of a coughing fit. And uh, yeah. All right.
And we're back. That was uh, a little bit quicker than the last interchange we built. And, you know, I'm pretty pleased with it. And I guess you can see now, if you didn't see the thumbnail, why I'm kind of coining this like a hairpin interchange or a bobby pin interchange. It's basically a clover leaf, but, uh, you know, it's elongated to meet uh, predicted traffic demands. So I'm expecting that there's going to be lots of uh, cars coming off of this side off into the off ramp here. It's gonna loop around and then we're gonna be able to split the traffic into left hand turns and right hand turns. So that's gonna, you know, allow for more flow in the first place. And then same thing on this side, this is gonna be from the downtown. On the left side of the screen, it's gonna be the downtown and it's going towards our major highway. So cars going into, uh, from the downtown into Prairie Station are gonna to want to come over in this way and then they're gonna line up to go left on this side but if they're gonna go into a future development, they can still slide right. Now, if cars are coming from Perry Station, which is the bottom of the screen, they'll be able to easily go right up into here and wait at a light right here and turn left to go up into the downtown. Now, as you see these cars over here, they're already going towards the highway. So we already have really good highway junctions coming from this side, which is why I don't mind there being a left-hand turn, because I, I don't suspect that too many cars are going to choose this path when there's going to be better options available. Now, if they want to go towards the downtown, though, and they're coming from this side, they'll easily stay on the right-hand side, take a right, so, you know, not crossing over traffic, and then there you go. They have lots of speed to, uh, lots of time to get up to speed, especially when there's going to be lots of trucks in this area, to go towards the downtown. Now, say you're coming from this side, which is going to be a future suburban development, probably, Again, simple enough, you want to go downtown, you just got to wait at a light and go this way. But you want to go towards, um, yeah, sorry, then you want to go towards, uh, you know, the system interchange and the main highway, easily just take a right, and there you go. So, another thing this gives us is it is going to give us lots of space in case we need to do further tweaks in the first place. With a cloverleaf, it takes up lots of space, because this is a cloverleaf interchange. It's just a modified cloverleaf interchange. Um, so if we do need to make changes, if there's one side of the highway that's gonna have, that turns out to be way more in demand than the other, it's gonna allow us an opportunity to revise this. So one thing I like doing on this channel is I like taking something that's realistic, putting it in place, and if we need to tweak it down the line, we will. So cloverleaf interchanges are extremely popular in the prairies of Canada. And why that is? Well, there's tons of land. There's tons of land available to build them. Uh, pro provinces that get the, the right-of-ways for the highways, their right-of-ways are way larger than the highway themselves. Why? Because there's land There's land available, there's other reasons, historical reasons, that I just can't get into, probably not appropriate for this channel. Um, and yeah, so this is kind of what I came up with. I was uh, playtesting it a little bit today, and uh, I just want to talk through some things, mainly the upgrade of Mackenzie Street here while we do this. So if I cough, I'm going to try to mute it in time and I'll do it off camera or like when I'm editing the video. But just, just warning if there's some strange mutes or if I miss a cough, that is what's happening. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to upgrade this whole section of Mackenzie Street up to our old bridge. And that's going to play into a couple things. You can see that this road here goes into our other our current system interchange our system slash service as well, again so we're going to give it a dedicated turning lane we're also going to do the same thing into this junction here in between that we're going to do something that i see quite often out in the prairies so we're going to do a four lane two-way road with median no parking so this median can technically be crossed over. And that gives us a great opportunity in these instances here to stretch the node, pull open uh, traffic manager, remove the crosswalks, and go back into our roads tool, go into this here. And this gives us a great opportunity to do something like this. So it's like a lane already exists in the middle of the highway or in the middle of the road here. And we can just This isn't right. <laughs> oh, silly Steven. There we go. 
We can fill it in uh, with uh, just holding Alt down. This is the uh, lane marking tool. So we can play around with it to, to match it up, but I'm not going to do that, do that today. Uh, and then this gives us some dedicated turning lanes into here. So we have a dedicated right, which would play in great. So if we go back into our node controller, we can even square this node off. Let's, uh, let's make it a little bit nicer. We'll bring this out. And we can upgrade this road in the future. I think uh, just for right now, just really quickly, I'm just going to upgrade uh, these parts with just the two lane road because I don't want to mess it up too, too much, the, the, the lanes that we got going on. Uh, let's re-square that node. Let's make this a massive interchange here because it's well deserved. And the reason why I wanted to upgrade this is so we can see the crosswalks. There we go. So we just scooch this forward a little bit more. Scooch this one forward. There we go. So we go back into our dedicated turning lanes. And now let's do something like this. So we have a dedicated left. This road's going to go into the downtown, so it's probably going to be, uh, be used. Uh, and then we have these two lanes here, so this these this will allow for trucks to turn. However, what we could do in the future, I'm not going to do today, is have a slip lane. And I think that's probably the way to go here. So then we keep two lanes of traffic going forward. So a little slip lane right here just for uh, traffic. You know what? I said what I'm not going to do today, but why, why can't I do it today? We can just do it right now. Pretty simply enough, all we really need to do is just connect those two pieces together. Swing this forward, like so. Then uh, let's take the same road piece we had before. Let's upgrade it. Let's go back to here. Let's delete this. Then we can just fill it up instead with normal arrows. And you know, we're not going to have a left hand turn here. So let's make sure that is the case here. So yeah, there we go. Um, and now what we'll be able to do here on this on this side then is simply remove the right hand turn and now we have a dedicated right system going on this way we maintain two lanes going forward into our interchange we have a dedicated left for uh working on this area now i'm not going to just I'm not going to do the, the lane thing on this side here because we just showed you what to do and i'll do it off camera but uh same thing over here this is going to give us we could even go a step further on this side and add in a set like a, a fourth lane here but uh, i'm not gonna do that today we'll we'll play this out a little bit and there we go so i do remember we had something funky going on so i'll just double check everything there uh later on but uh so that's how we're gonna kind of come into this interchange here onto holmes street um and now let's go uh, like down Mackenzie Street, which I think we just need to make sure that the name actually continued this way. Young, 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 Mackenzie Boulevard. So Mackenzie Boulevard, we gotta make sure that Mackenzie Boulevard comes all the way down into here. There we go. So uh, now we're gonna probably need a dedicated left on this side. So what I'm thinking is we run just a large road. Now, if you go to the prairies and you go on Google Maps, there are some pretty large roads just that doesn't really seem that like they're necessary. So we're gonna run a three lane, uh, yeah, sorry, a six lane, I guess. No parking on this section here. Now, what this is gonna allow us to do is on this side, we're gonna have a dedicated left. We'll also have all right, we could also do the slip lane to the right side, but we're not going to do that right now. And that's going to allow us, uh, you know, a good opportunity here. Okay, we're not going to worry too much about this junction on the other, on the like, uh, homes side of things. Uh, okay, so now we're into here. This right here, this is for a dedicated left. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pop this open. We're going to have two left hand turns. Now these left hand turns here, we're going to have this one go into there and then this one go uh, into there and there. And you know what? I probably should have done something like this. All right. And then these ones are all going to go straight. Fantastic. These ones will also just continue straight, straight through. 
And the reason why we have this dedicated system here is so that uh, we split up the left and the right hand traffic. So that means on this side then, we're gonna have right hand traffic. But before we do that, we need to upgrade this road. And we're gonna make sure that this road has a dedicated left because we need to access the highway here. So we're actually gonna be losing a lane from the side before it. So we're gonna want to go to this road again. And if you hear me talking slowly and taking deep breaths, that is because I'm trying not to cough. <laughs> Try not to make myself laugh either, which is difficult. All right, so the next step would be to go into here and we're gonna add this to be a yield right now uh, I can see us upgrading it into a traffic light in the future. Um, and same thing here as well, just to start off with. But I see this sp uh, this one particularly being a traffic light. So on this side, I want... Oh, let's actually upgrade the road first. But this side is dedicated rights. On this side, we have two going forward. Uh, and then this one is going to be a dedicated left onto the highway. So let's go back to that six lane road. Let's make sure we're choosing the exact same one. And we're going to grab that right through there. And there we go. We're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to upgrade it just about that point. And just to mirror what we did on the other side. There we go. All right. So. Uh, let's go back to the other side of things. And here we go. Okay, so this is a dedicated left. Uh, this one here, we're going right into here. Yeah. This one, we're going there and here. And then this one, we'll just do something similar to what we did on the other side. Alrighty, and then here we have a dedicated uh, turn. And then same thing over here. These two go straight. We don't really need to do all these lane arrows. I'm probably going to remove them off camera. Um, but uh, it's just convenient for uh, showing you what I'm trying to do at the moment. So let's just dive into node controller really quickly. I'm just going to line these up a little bit better. Whoops, uh, wrong way, I guess. Yeah, this is gonna, it'll, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna go over onto this side now. And same kind of idea. So let's take our yield sign and we're gonna yield from the right-hand side. We're also gonna yield for these left-hand turns. And let's do that again. So make sure that these are both left-hand turns. And then we'll make sure these ones are both right. Here we go, we have a dedicated uh, left. We also have a dedicated right on this side. Hmm. Now that's not really necessary from my point of view because we might just jam traffic up. But I guess if you need to turn around on the highway, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. But then again, on this side here, what we might need to do is just bite the bullet on our lane maths and just do that. So then we have a right and a straight and we can continue that forward. Then we'll just dive dive on back into here, make that a dedicated left, and we'll just fix things ever so slightly. Okay, so same idea as the other side, and uh, yeah, there we go. So now this should be in working condition. We have everything we need. We got yield signs. I guess uh, one thing we can do also is. Um, to say traffic can just go through the interchange, uh, especially when it's on this side here, I don't mind. And then right here as well, I don't mind them just going right through. I actually think we might take pedestrian crossings off of here. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And now why are we doing that? It doesn't seem like it's gonna be, oh, we need that one, uh, you know, the most efficient. Well. In reality, especially around these highways, they are not walkable. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, you know, make that realistic. And maybe what we can do instead is incorporate some pedestrian access down the line. 
I'm just messing everything up, aren't I? Holy, let's, uh, let's scrap what I did. And let's see how far we can pull this back to get it straight. Yeah, there we go. We push it forward. Yeah. All right, we'll just leave it for now. All right, so uh, let's just do a quick, uh, a, a few quick things with no controller here. Like I'm gonna open this whole area up. Uh, let's just go back and move it really quickly and grab this node. I'm just gonna slide it down. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. And why are we doing this? Well, it's not necessary, but it does make turns a bit more feasible in real life. Make it straight. Yeah, let's do this one again. Let's back that up as well. So, um, yeah, that is our little hairpin interchange here. Let's just do a bit of detailing uh, around it, especially around uh, these landings here. Let's grab that height. We'll just try get a bit of a bump out. Grab the second height. There we go. Let's actually do the same thing on this side. Fill in the land a little bit, and then we'll just smooth everything out. All right, and we're not going to worry too too much about you know what's going on over here. So I will actually just delete that because that is a future problem, and. I'm just going to leave it at this angle for a second because you may see what the future is for Mackenzie Boulevard. Uh, but what is the plan for this highway here? So now that we kind of see everything, we have our Y interchange. We're going into the downtown. We start off as four lanes going into the downtown. We lose a lane. We get it back momentarily, but then we're back down to three. Well, my idea for this is we're going to eventually merge these two together and we're going to incorporate it into the downtown in some regard whether it be two three-lane roads separate kind of uh starting like a park or a downtown um or whether it, they become together into a large boulevard kind of like mackenzie uh, that is to be seen however i do want to draw in just a couple more uh country roads just for our Viewing pleasure, I guess. Uh, and we'll, we'll just kind of, you know, look at predicting some um, some uh, some roads. Now, this is not going to stay necessarily all of these roads. This is more of just a bit of a prediction here. So let's let's uh, make sure we're snapping at exactly 180 degrees. And we're taking this road all the way through. Now. This is where I'm actually going to look at changing the grid. So we have our original grid set over here in Prairie Station. As you can see, it's off of the rail line. Now, I don't think that that grid would be maintained. So what I'm thinking is we're going to do a bit of a, um, a grid change. We're going to go off of Mackenzie here. So let's make sure we have node snapping on. Okay, let's click home. And I'm just going to draw this one out to about here. I'm going to then bring this one out at a 90 degree angle. Connect it forward. Okay. And we're going to then draw this one down at a 90 degree. And this is going to be the grid that we're going to be working off of. So these were really rough roads. Home Street is going to stay. We're going to keep Holmes. Um, but if we're going to turn this road into anything, uh, well, first of all, this probably won't be here. And we'll cut off Holmes right here. Maybe Holmes will turn. But we're right at the point where we're going to turn into probably a road equivalent to this or, um, you know, one-way systems like I mentioned. But we're going to have to turn this now and that will be the situation for a future video, but let us just uh, look at bringing down some roads here. So actually, uh, I forgot what my plan was because I was originally going to bring this road down and that was going to be the road. Just 
just line it up with this. Now I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna connect it up. I might. But that's where I want an alignment. And that means I also want my next alignment to be right here. I don't think that continued. I'm just gonna pause the game, place it through, and then I'm going to just delete that. There we go. Oh, I was, I was so close, wasn't I? All right, so these are the only roads that I'm probably gonna keep from what we're doing. Um, yeah, so we got those ones. And then this one here, I actually want to connect this up like that. And we'll bring this one over. And then we'll upgrade this little piece right here. And we'll work on that in the future. And then this road here from Greenberg, oh, wrong tool. We'll bring this one down. We're not gonna connect it up. Um, but we will connect up right in the middle of here somehow, but we'll do that in the future Let's bring a couple more of these roads through. I think we said this one was going to be a main thoroughfare So let's bring that one over and yet yeah, it connects right up into here. So will we actually connect that up though? I think we will And this junction is going to be probably come around about um, but we'll just kind of leave it for now as an interchange a massive five-point interchange <laughs> uh, But yeah, I think a roundabout is probably in place for this one that would probably be efficient or we might actually disconnect uh, This road, but uh, you know, we're just kind of doing some rough planning and that's that's the idea, right? So let's see so we have um, old Fort Prairie Road here I guess what we can either do is go right at it off of a uh, an even angle here, or we can connect it up with a grid system. Uh, let's connect it up with the grid, actually. I think that'll probably be good. And this one uh, will turn into uh, the street, actually. Go with the curve tool here. Just like that. All right, so this gives us some fun uh, future development space. I don't like either of those connections, so we'll just kind of leave it and as you can kind of see the downtown is starting to come together now the reason why I haven't done anything on this side is because I told you at the beginning of the of the, the episode today that we were going to also look at the rail line so we have the rail line coming all the way through here now if we look at it we have the road uh, the rail on the right here it goes all the way down and we have our little connection here for passenger rails and we also have it connecting into the cargo so the one on the right here, we may need to do a bit of revision because if we ever want a rail to go into this way, we need to at least create a connection point so that it can hop onto this line. So we may need to get another bypass, but that's not the name of today's video. We're just going to plan out the rail line. Well, the name of today's video is building a custom interchange or something like that. But since the province probably had a uh, right away here I can see the province also looking at getting the rail line through here so if we're saying that this was a historical city or a historical town we got the fort um, Fort Prairie Historical Center this was the original town in the area so any rail connecting into the provincial line here is probably done by the city or the municipality to connect it into the more of the downtown so it's gonna be a bit of a spur uh, and if we look at the topography here, this is going to be a major factor. We have some flat land right here. I think that's where the rail is going to go. Although, we have some pretty even land over on this side. We may be able to swing 
the rail through. Yeah, you know what? We're already kind of ending things off right here. Why don't we kind of play into this a little bit? Okay, so let's kind of, we kind of know what we're doing now. Um, let's grab the rail line. We'll connect it into here. And we need a connection point at some point to bring it over. So I think we'll go from right here. We'll connect it in just like that. It's a bit large of a node here. That's good. So we're going to swing out. And then let's come all the way from this side. And I'll, I think I'll clean it up a little bit um, in a future video, but this is more for rough planning. So we combine up right here. So this way we have, you know, a rail connection coming from this side of the map that we can go into downtown. We have a probable train connection into our train station here. And then let's go back to the topography here. And let's try and just find a nice clean pathway. So I know we're not sticking right next to the highway like I previously mentioned, but I really like the idea of kind of coming right up through here, almost straight, and then curving right into the town down this way. So I think that's probably what we'll do. So. go something like that yeah okay I like that so that'll be kind of the rough plan of how the rail is gonna work now I know it's not efficient it's not gonna stay this way it's not gonna look like this in the end but I just wanted to get this planning in for our uh, road network planning um, but now that we've done that I think we're gonna end today's video folks um, we have a lot of uh, demands for an industry and stuff like that. So what I'm thinking of for next video is we're going to, uh, you know, add a bit to Greenberg, expand this, maybe look into this area. We're going to add a high school in here. I think we really need that demand. And then maybe because of the industry demand, maybe we'll look at starting Jefferson Farm. So this is about as long as I can talk without coughing. <laughs> I'm surprised it uh, actually survived this long, but uh, let's just dive into right here and take a nice screenshot of this interchange. I'm going to do something like this. Let's spin it this way for purposes of the thumbnail. So have a wonderful day, folks. Talk to you soon. Peace out.